Uh, today we're just going to do a quick drill on our radios. Uh, nothing too in depth. We're just going to go over the basics and talk about the new functions um, included with the new handset um, and attaching it to the new helmets, seeing as how you were at the drill mm. that we did. Um, all right, so we we'll just go through the basic buttons. You can follow along on your radios as we go. So we should all know the basic switches. That we, uh, I'll go through them one by one. Your on and off switch is on the right. Yeah, really. The channel lock is one that we always forget. It's just in front of the top screen. So if you just look next to your channel switch, it's just in front there. That's one that everyone always seems to forget where it is and then can't manage to work the radios and we're out of job. Um, I don't notice that that makes it a little bit before. Yeah. <laughs> Beeps every time you change the setting. Just It's very, very in depth. <laughs> Alright, um, your basic. So, your emergency button, if you're ever trapped anywhere, if you get stuck, is there. That red, big red one, if I can see it on the top. Good start. Your menu buttons, so when you want to change stations quickly on our ones, you can change from analog, up and down, zone up, zone down. So that menu button will work these three little things here. They're all attached to the menu button. So it says zone up, zone down, and what's the third one? So battery. And battery, so it'll tell you battery. Uh, your home button will automatically take you to the programmed home station, whatever that is in our zone. I think it has MA3 or it could be 510, I'm not sure. Um, your site ID, so it should repeat to you what your ID is. And your push to talk, so we use that to talk if you're just using handheld. Now, with the new ones, they are attached to, so the cable comes out here, it will be attached to the new headset here. These are not intrinsically safe. Now that they've been attached to the new things, they are um, MSA won't cover the radio company Motorola to um, have them intrinsically safe, although we've seen they are, <coughs> but they're, they're not safe. So if we're going to a gas environment or somewhere where your LEDs are going off, we're not allowed to use these, so you just have to leave them outside. Oh, really? Yeah, the radios all together, or just, just the radios? Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah, you actually have to disconnect the, the handheld part, <coughs> and um, just use it as a walkie-talkie, like Rob said. Um, now with your screen, you've got the signal strength. So if you've got no signal, you might have to do a radio check just to test it out. Your battery capacity, your zone where you are in Sydney, um, your channel, so normally it will be on 103, not 101, and your caller ID. So if you were to use a um, you can do a private call. You can actually use the caller ID and call someone up radio to radio instead of taking out the whole channel. Just give them a little test and then hand something. Yeah, so if you want to disconnect it, have a play and see if they work. So when you've got no hands, I'm pretty sure the, the speaker's just in the front. So it should just be here somewhere. Where? Just there. Do <laughs> <laughs> you got that one? No. 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 Hey. Hello. Hello. Uh, now, three points that I want to make when we're um, using these new radios with the new handset thing um, is when you're using it with the new helmet. As we went out the other day, the volume is quite different inside your helmet as compared to having it on the outside just with the handheld thing. So when you're using it with the helmet, you uh, have to turn it on as low as possible. So you have your volume as low as possible when it's with the helmet. That way you don't deafen yourself when you turn it on, and if you have to, you can turn it up. And there's actually a switch on the back of these that you can go from one to two to three. So you can change it on the back when you're, if your radio's in your pocket and you don't pull it out to change it again, you can actually 
raise it up again. So if you start that on the handset on one, and then if it's too low, then you can jack it up twice from that. Um, if your risk assessment of your job uh, shows that there's um, flammable, it's a flammable environment, so we will not be able to use these handsets. So they're not to be used in a flammable environment. That doesn't mean we can't use radio communications, it just means that we can't use them with the push to talk handset. We have to use them disconnectedly um, side apart, as Rob showed you just before, and go from there. Take a break. Uh, and the third point we just have to make is that when now when we're doing SIMS check, this doesn't apply to you boss, but to the other boys. When you do the SIMS check now, you actually have to connect the radios to the helmet and do a radio check via the helmet and have someone else with you to make sure that they're working. So with the SIMS, we connect to the helmet. As the new SIMS recommended practice should be between the our SIMS helmet and the has. And when you're doing the test, instead of just testing it, making sure they work, you actually have to connect it to the helmet. And um, it'll actually come up with an error message if it's not working properly. But if there's no error message, then it's fine. You just test it with someone else. Obviously, you have the volume minimum, and then raise it up as needed to be done. All right, so is everyone happy with that? Should we go have a test outside and make sure everything's working?